Michael here. Hi, and welcome to Answers News for uh, Monday, April 22nd, 2019. I'm Avery Foley. I'm here together with Dr. Gabriella Haynes and Brian Osborne. We actually have our hey whole guys. team back. For once. For once, yeah. We were supposed to be doing it, the three of us, quite frequently, and it's been since like February because you ditched On us the and road left. Just a little bit. To go to Africa and then Alaska and who knows where else. So. And then you're doing something fairly important fairly soon where yeah. you'll be here as well. Correct? You're ditching us too. Yeah, I think last Monday is going to be my last day here at Answers News. For a little while. For a little while, yeah. yeah. I'm going to be busy having a baby, so um, I'm taking care of the baby. So we're giving you some time off to go have a baby or something yeah. like that. Yeah, learning how to take care of a baby is my, <laughs> it's my first one, so I don't know. My it's mom, super uh, easy. It's like the well, easiest thing you'll ever do. Uh huh. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that my mom, she still That's remembers. She still remembers something. She's yeah, because your mom's coming down. Yeah, she's coming from Brazil to stay awesome. with now, me for a little Now, you were bit. super busy this weekend. Mm -hmm. I was super busy, absolutely. So I'm a little... A little sleep deprived. So we noticed that when we were crazy things. That's why. getting ready for this yes. and you kept messing your words up. So <laughs> if he says anything funny, it's because he's tired. <laughs> you can play it back on rewind like we did with the one that you did a while back. I won't mention it by name. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we had the Answering Atheist Conference this past weekend, which was just phenomenal. So many people coming, hundreds yeah. of people coming to the Ark Encounter at the Answer Center, which was an incredible success. It went really well. Kicked off by Ken Ham. And then we mm -hmm. had Ray Comfort from Living Waters there who did multiple presentations and we had a great time with him. A little backstage shenanigans with Ray and Ken <laughs> as we were messing around. They like, tease each other a lot. <laughs> yes, too. all the time. Oh my word. Well, I think that's the default setting of Australians yes. and New, New Zealand. Zealand. They say if they like correctly. you, they'll they'll pick on you. Yeah. So, so that they did they that like a each lot. Other. I was the MC of the conference, so that's why I was getting these pictures and hanging out a bunch and being there a whole lot. Mark Spence, CZ was there. Multiple speakers, of course, so a lot of our speakers were there. I could not find a picture of Dr. Georgia Purdom. Oh, no, we have it somewhere, but I she was find down it. there. <laughs> yeah, there's Bodie, there's Tommy. I did a session as well, multiple sessions, and people were so encouraged. By I heard really good feedback yeah. uh, from people I know that went and from Facebook and things. So, and really thank you to all the people who watch Answers News. So many people came up to me as the MC and were saying thank you for this program, how they're encouraged and equipped by this program, and they're thankful for it. So, we are thankful that you're thankful and glad it's helpful. That's the <laughs> We're hope, thankful that you right? watch. Yeah, I was very yeah. happy to, um, Chloe, I think, um, her name, she came and she was like, she was, I think, nine, and she was like, hi, Dr. Gabriella Haynes, <laughs> and I was like, ah, this is, is just cool. so amazing to see, you know, like, Aww. little kids, like, get involved with science and, yeah. uh, and uh, Bible creation, it's just amazing. It, That's it made, really it, cool. made, it made my day. I'm very happy. Yeah, I met someone here at the museum, <clears throat> I think her name was Kaylee, <clears throat> who says she watches all the time, awesome. and That's good. it was cool to get to meet her. <clears throat> And then we had Michael O'Brien leading music at the conference. He did a great job. From New Song back in the day, did a phenomenal job. Shout out to Michael O'Brien. And then we, I got to meet Australian comedian Ben Price. Mm. Does over 200 impersonations, which wow. was really impressive. He was hilarious. And then Sunday morning, uh, Ray Comfort did the Sunday morning wow. uh, message, of course, for Easter. Yeah, it was did, packed. Like people were down that had to be down there for 7 a.m. And there it was, was early too. hundreds and hundreds of people. And like, that's really early that is to be up, <laughs> to be down at the Ark. So and, uh, my family that was, was in town. We were there at the Ark Encounter and we were there for either the conference or for the Sunday morning session. And then I think your family was there too for the Answers Center dedication, Yeah, right? Yeah, we came down for the dedication, right. which was really cool. It was. Um, those are some pictures from the dedication and uh, getting to have all the founders there and <laughs> people who are integral to everything AIG has accomplished, which is pretty cool to see those people honored for their Well, and a lot of people may not be as familiar with Mark Lawyer and Mike Zobach as yeah, well as Ken yeah. Hamm, but those are the founding members of this mm -hmm. ministry that God used many years ago to get this thing started for his glory. So we are so thankful for them and all that they do Absolutely. for sure. But you were here. We got some pictures of your yeah, family. Yeah, that's me with my right? family down at the Ark. The dedication. And then I, I recognize and that person. <laughs> we, yeah. we saw Gabby while we were down there, so she got a picture with my little girl yeah my husband got some day off, the day off and then we we made it there too he was around the the ark walking and as you see i cannot really walk much so <laughs> <laughs> so we sat and chatted while the guys yeah. looked at stuff uh, yeah and then my sister and her family are down there in the audience right now actually right. watching answers news live for the first time so that was pretty cool so we were down there with them the other day that's just my daughter she's uh, adorable just pictures of your kids right yeah just randomly. yeah 
because they're super cute. And then I got jealous because she had pictures of her kids, so I just threw in pictures of my kids, really for no reason. <laughs> they're not even related. To, they're not even at the arc. This but was whatever. for Easter. That's my daughter <laughs> Macy figuring this out. And uh, a couple of quick shout outs. First, my parents and in-laws are in the audience, which is really cool. And then also, I was just in Mississippi at Audubon Drive uh, Bible Church in Laurel, Mississippi, and it was a phenomenal conference. And the reason it is unique is that group of middle schoolers, they did tons of fundraisers to raise the money to make the conference even possible to get AIG to their church, to get this teaching to their church. That's really Amazing. cool. It was incredible. And they raised enough money to where they had enough left over. They bought the VBS from oh, Andrew. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Year, and they're doing the VBS in their church as well. That's oh, awesome. that's fantastic. So, really cool stuff going on there. So uh, they made it happen. You can bring a conference to your church if you would like. You can make it happen as well. We do a lot of them. So anyway, I wanted to give a shout out to the JVs over at Audubon Drive Bible Church. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Awesome. Yeah, All right. Good. All right. Let's show. I guess in, right? lots of people are jumping on, so let's get started here. Absolutely. Uh, so the first item, uh, probably most people have seen this in the news now uh, about the um, terrorist attacks in Sri Lanka that have. What we heard just before we went live was the, the count is over 300 people have been killed so far, and about 500 have been wounded um, by suicide bombers in uh, churches and hotels on Easter Sunday. So uh, we just wanted to. Um, just we're holding these people up in prayer and Absolutely. really as scripture says mourning with those who mourn uh hearts are pretty heavy for the for the church and and people in sri lanka right now and and some of the tourists who are there who are killed and their families around the world who are suffering right now um it's just a reminder that we live in a in a world that's been broken by sin mm -hmm. and it's because of of our sin and our sin in adam that we see things like this happening um and it's a it's a very sad reminder of of the, the world that we live in and, and the, yeah. but the hope that we have in Christ that uh, he promises that those who put their faith and trust in him will, will live with him for eternity and will have that gift of eternal life. So we have, as believers, we have that hope and, and we're thankful for that. Well, the, the hope that we this celebrated tragedy. this past weekend yeah. in Easter and also recognizing that the event of the fall uh, that brought sin into the world busted the thinking of man. Our thinking is broken mm -hmm. because of the fall. And now yeah. people today have different worldviews that are not biblical and ideas do have consequences. And this yes. is the fruition of an anti-biblical worldview, rejecting the Bible, embracing it, you know, different ideas apart from God's word. Mm -hmm. And it causes stuff like this. And so we pray for our brothers and sisters it's a good reminder, too, to pray for those overseas. We have mm -hmm. many brothers and mm -hmm. sisters who are not in the U.S. They live around the world. They love God. They love his word. They stand boldly on it, even in light of persecution. Let mm -hmm. us pray for them as they stand firm and also as they endure such hardship uh, with attacks mm -hmm. like these. Yeah, you know. yeah. All right. Our next item comes from fizz.org. Studies of fossil teeth reveal another Pliocene ape species from Southeast Asia. So this is referring to, this isn't a new find. They've had this fossil, um, it was described in the 1950s. So it's, they've had it for quite a while now. Um, but at the time, back in the 50s, it was interpreted as what they call a prehistoric human. But now they're re- naming it um, as a ape as opposed to some form of human. And that's human. never happened before. Never, right? ever. <laughs> There's yeah. never been a misinterpretation of no, a fossil they, before. <laughs> actually, that happens all the time, you know, <laughs> right. because sometimes they're just putting things together and they say, oh, no, it's, it's a human, but they don't have, they're not doing the right research. Mm -hmm. We did that, like, uh, I think last week with the yeah, paper. Yeah, we talked about right. the new fossil from um, um, the Philippines. Um, and we saw in the paper that they had a lot of problems, mm -hmm. you know, sure. with the, uh, mm -hmm. the material, the results, the conclusion. It had a lot of, of the of method. calling it homo as opposed yeah, to homo. Australopithecus. Yes. Sure. And uh, after some time working a little bit more on the research, people rechecking the mm -hmm. information, normally they find out that it's something very different. Mm -hmm. This is one of the cases that was interpreted at first as human, and actually um, they found out that it's, a, it's an ape mm -hmm. and not uh, a yeah. human. Which Lived is similar to what's happened in the past with Piltdown Man, Piltdown man mm -hmm. Nebraska, Nebraska Man, other mm -hmm. ones as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's interesting though, they still refer to it as part of the hominid collection. Sure. And, and hominid refers to humans, their ancestors, their supposed ancestors, mm -hmm. and some great apes. So they're still taking, even though this is an ape, they're still kind of trying to put it in the this like category to make it seem kind of well it's still like related to us as like a sure. distant cousin even though it's it's the just language an that right. they so, use yeah. it's very it's, evolutionary laden language uh -huh. right. it's uh, misleading and uh well since that we're now talking about fossil i just would like to say hi to a friend of mine she's from brazil we went to uh, the phd program together uh, 
she's not a creation, she's not Christian, uh, um, but she was the only one that when people in my college, they found out that I was uh, involved with creation ministry, she was the only one that openly on Facebook, she defended it, protect me. Um, wow. Uh, my, my faith, and she was like, Aww. just let her in oh, peace, you know, so. And she's you. watching today? She's watching, yeah, so thank you so much Hi. for uh, your support, and uh, just want to say hi to you. Aw. By the way, a quick little thing we forgot to mention, you are following Facebook on Ken's Facebook yes, page, Yes, yeah, I'm reading the comments here. She's following the comments there. I'm following the comments on the Answers in Genesis page, and then you are following on the YouTube page, Yes. Mm -hmm. right? Someone right. said yeah. here that there. you did a wonderful job, Brian, at the conference. You're answering today's tough oh. question session was great. Oh, thank you. Whoever mm -hmm. said that. Justin Pierce so, said that. Thanks, Justin. I appreciate yeah. that. We had a great time. The whole conference was phenomenal. It was a blessing to be part of it, for sure. Lots of people on here, too. I see Phil. I don't know where Phil's from, but he's a top fan. Hey, Phil. I saw <laughs> Modesty earlier. Uh, if you jump on, we'll try to follow your comments and try yep, to interject those sure. as much as we can. Yeah, Absolutely. people from France here, from oh, wow. Malta. Yeah, from England. All over um, the place. Mm -hmm, LA, That's awesome. a lot of place, California. Yep. All right. This, be oh, before sorry, Brian. On, I just wanted to say one quick thing, then we'll move on. I know we got to go. But again, I would encourage the Christians who are watching this, as you look at these sort of articles and as people interpret evidence, think fast. It's a little an acronym, F-A-S-T. Think fast. F, what are the facts? What are the mm -hmm. actual tangible things we're actually seeing? A, what are the assumptions they are employing to interpret the present day facts? S, seek the biblical understanding of what you're actually looking at. Mm -hmm. And then T, tell other people, give an answer for your faith. So just kind of remember that's helpful as you look at these particular articles because it's always about worldview, right? Yes. Looking at present day stuff, interpreting it through a worldview. So keep that in mind as you go through all these different articles. It will be helpful to you. Now. All right. All right. Move on Thanks. now. All right. All right. Hey. The next one comes from Fox News. Woolly mammoth mystery solved. Study reveals shocking details about prehistoric creature. So everybody loves mammoths. Of course, they fascinated people. Oh, yeah. um, you know, everyone, everyone loves mammoths. But this article is, t is talking about a study that looked at mammoth DNA and looked at Neanderthal it DNA. Um, it was pretty neat. So, yeah. so obviously, Nathan we've talked about Neanderthals before on the show. They're just, uh, they're humans made in God's image, just like us, descended from Adam and Eve through Noah and his family, lived after the flood. Um, and they have some unique DNA differences to them. Um, and they, when they're looking at the, the DNA of the mammoths and Neanderthals, they found that they share similar molecular characteristics due to the fact that, they, that both the mammoths and the Neanderthals tended to live in the harsher northern climate uh, right. during the Ice Age. So they're saying that these two are genetically similar because of convergent evolution. And what is convergent evolution? So you defined it really well but when we sure. were talking through here before, um, before we started live. So convergent evolution is the idea that certain traits will evolve at different times in, on different things given certain environmental mm -hmm. factors. Mm -hmm. For example, I think evolution teaches the, the, uh, the trait of flying. Wings mm -hmm. evolved at least five different times or right. something along that Or echolocation scale. a couple different times. Right. Yeah. So yeah. that sort of idea that different things evolve similar traits mm -hmm. when they face similar environmental pressures. Mm -hmm. That's convergent evolution. Which in this case is the cold. So they're saying because mm -hmm. they, lived, they yeah. both live in the cold, they, con they evolved alongside each other to develop this resistance, epigenetic, not even genetic And then what is um, the epigenome traits. for people who aren't familiar with that? Um, so D Dr. Georgia Purdom talks about epigenetics quite a bit on the show, and it yeah. basically is just like a switch um, that turns genes on or off. Um, so in this case, it would um, turn on genes for cold mm -hmm. adaptation. And those genes can be to... affected by environment, yep. even by what you eat, mm -hmm. right, by food taken in. We're learning more and more. It's a brand new field of study. It's really yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's a really cool field of study. But they can turn on and off based on how they're pre-programmed to respond. Right. So this tells us nothing about right. convergent evolution. It Correct. tells us about design, and because the information's already there, it's just this, whether the switch is on or off. Right, yeah. It, that's one of the points um, that I was going to make too. It's uh, the information's there already. Mm -hmm. you and where know, did it come from? Yes. Right. You know, so it's not something that is going to be added. It just right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what evolution off. requires. Mm -hmm. It requires the addition of brand new information, right. mm -hmm. which yeah, we don't. Right. We're not seeing in this study at all. And we would we would expect common traits within living organisms mm -hmm. because we have a common designer. Mm -hmm. It makes mm -hmm. really good sense. We do see common traits and common uh, responses to environment within the epigenome. We have a common designer who put the information inside living things originally. Mm -hmm. And of course, to get information requires a mind, mm -hmm. right? And of course, it's very organized. DNA is amazingly complex. And we don't typically th see complex things coming from a chaotic state. Right. right? right. Yes. Which yeah. is what evolution does suggest. So evolution violates known laws of science. We see that here as well. But 
but what we find is consistent within the biblical worldview. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's really interesting. They, because of the faulty worldview, the researchers say this, there are genetic similarities between the evolutionary adaptation in Neanderthals and mammoths. So the idea, this idea alone opens up endless avenues of new research in evolution, archaeology, and other disciplines. So because they assume there's a connection between mm -hmm. mammoths and the Neanderthals, and this proves that they're going to look for more connections and how they can better understand it and apply it in modern-day science. But they're going to be looking for stuff that isn't actually there. Right, and yeah. And wasting yeah. endless amounts of time, money, and intellect doing so. Mm -hmm. Evolution turns out to be just really one of the biggest anti-sciences there mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, holding back real way. research. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This next one comes from the New York Times. Um, a teacher is fired over a topless selfie stirring a debate over gender equity. So this is referring to a story of a middle school teacher who was recently fired because a student got a hold of a topless photo of her that she'd sent to a male colleague that she was dating. Somehow the student obtained it. Obviously, the school was pretty upset about that, um, and they ended up um, terminating her employment over that. So she is suing the school for improper termination because she says that, or her lawyer says, they didn't get the memo that men and women are equal. So she's saying if she had been a man uh, and that topless photo had been seen topless. by someone, she would not have been fired for that photo. But because she was a woman, she was fired. Just So this is an issue of gender inequality because she was fired for being a woman um, and wouldn't have been fired if she'd been a man in the same situation. Which within a biblical worldview, we can understand there's a distinct difference mm -hmm. between a woman and a man. Equality does not right. equal sameness, but which is what our culture is really trying to push, this idea that equality means sameness, and that's simply not true. And fairness to them and the lawyer and the woman here making the argument mm -hmm. to, to justify what happened, she's being consistent within the secular worldview. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's if we are not created in God's image, if we're not distinct, if we're not uh, if you're made just animals, male and female, if we're mm -hmm. just animals and we mm -hmm. should be all equal and, gen and gender and so forth, then. Yeah, if there really is They're no actually, such thing as male or female in the modern right. um, secular view anyway. It shouldn't have a problem with that. Uh -huh. She's being worldview. consistent with her, right. yeah, the worldview, mm -hmm. yes. The, the lawyer went on to talk about how um, that what these people are making her feel as if she did something, something that was dirty, something that was wrong. Sure. And he said, that's just not what we're about anymore in this millennial age. But morality doesn't change depending on the generation or depending on our culture Age. or, or what's, what's happening and whether or not we have, you know, cell phones where we can send photos and stuff. Right. Morality is dependent upon God and his word. We have an unchanging absolute standard for morality. But as soon as you throw away God's word and you That's don't right. start with God's word as your foundation, all of a sudden you don't have an ultimate starting point. You don't have an ultimate Authority. foundation for your thinking. So it becomes what the culture thinks or what I sure. as an individual think instead of having an absolute authority to um, judge someone's actions against. Mm -hmm. And because we always want to suppress the truth of God's word, the truth of uh, the reality that God made everything, the truth that God is our maker, we're made in his image, that's why we have a conscience, we suppress that truth. We don't try to make any excuse we can for why we do what we do and how it mm -hmm. can't be really wrong. I found it really interesting that towards the very end of the article, uh, the teacher said, this is the lowest point of my life. I've never felt so small and so defeated, and it wasn't my fault. Now, of course, it wasn't her fault that someone took the picture illegally and then... That, know, that the student got a hold of the picture wasn't her fault, fault. yes, but, but... the fact that she took the picture, mm -hmm. right, that was a sinful action... And sent to is, her boyfriend, yeah. You know, a consequence of her sin, and we see the ramifications mm -hmm. of that. But again, this is another example of trying to get rid of the guilt associated with our sin and mm -hmm. to blame shift, just like started back in mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 3. As soon as sin came into this world, we want to shift away any blame. And we'll see another example here of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By the way, I want to give a shout out to Hannah. It's good to see you on, on the chat again as well. Uh, Sherry uh, made the comment that God's design will blow your mind. Talking about the mammoths and the Neanderthals. We'll study it out a little bit more. And then someone here, Roger, said, talking about the mammoths and the Neanderthals, how they're related because of the epigenome. He says, so does this mean people in Peru and alpacas have similar DNA because they both live in the cold? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, all right, but anyway. Maybe that'll be the next study, <laughs> who knows? Pacas aren't quite as um, interesting as mammoths, I think. People aren't, aren't quite as keen to study them. <laughs> anyway. All right, from New Scientist, it's not an illusion. You have free will, it's just not what you think. So this is talking about the age-old question, do we have free will or not? A question that's been complicated by the Avery, evolutionary view that we're just animals. That, right? You're going to give a definitive answer <laughs> oh, yes, to that question? Oh, yes, absolutely. I got no. <laughs> um, today's but today's. <laughs> we can give some, some biblical insight into that. But this article starts out with 
not talking about humans, they're talking about digger wasps, which I hadn't even heard of. You have a picture of a digger wasp there. There we go. And so that's what they look like for those of you who, like me, had never heard of these. But um, it's really interesting. So these, these digger wasps lay their eggs inside of an insect like a cricket that they've stung and paralyzed. And then the larvae hatch and will eat the, the insect, which is still alive but paralyzed, and then crawl out of it. So it's kind of which gross is pretty and whatever. Brutal. But the, right. the, when the wasp stings the insect, they'll drag them down into their burrow, leave the insect there, and then go and check and make sure no dirt had fallen in and blocked the mm. burrow so that the young can get out or whatever. Right. And if you, as a scientist or whatever, move the cricket back over, the wasp will go back, move the cricket again, leave, check for blockages, and if you move the cricket again, it'll come back, move the cricket. So basically this idea that the wasp can't help itself. It has to follow this exact predetermined, sure. this is what I do, this is what I do next. This is what, and if you interrupt the cycle, it just goes back and repeats it over and over and over and over again on an endless loop. Which, Which seems is to suggest a long way this, to get to the issue yes, of free will. Yes, so that's how the article starts. It's like what? <laughs> but they're really summer. saying this Good digger summer, wasp yes. has no free will. Its biological determinism. It has to do what it's programmed to do. Are humans the same way? Is what the article is really looking at. Right. Um, as and they go on to say, of course, humans are animals, which we would completely disagree with right. from a biblical perspective. Right. And really, that's what's muddying the waters here for them, is because they think we're just animals. They're looking to the animal world and trying to say, well, we see these things in animals. So does this mean that humans are also like that? Mm -hmm. uh, but in a biblical worldview, like yes, we. We're biological machines, as they say here, but there's so much more to us than that. We're made in the image of God. We right. have a soul. Um, the ability we're to not reason, to digger think, wasps. To make decisions, to make choices, mm -hmm. to have response. To have we see that right in Genesis chapter three. Right. We see the we see what happens when yeah. um, humans make those choices, and those choices are not honoring to the Lord. I wanted to go back really quickly because they quoted Darwin talking about the digger yeah. wasps yeah. and how it affected his faith. He actually said this, and I wanted to point something out, and you guys can, of course, comment on it as well. Darwin was so appalled by the behavior of the digger wasp that he is one of the reasons for his loss of faith. He said, I cannot persuade myself to believe in a good, omnipotent God who designed and created this thing to do exactly what it does. That is, put those eggs inside the cricket, eat it from the inside out, which is a brutal thing. And so because he saw this, it mm -hmm. caused him to doubt in the biblical God. Because surely God would make a world where a critter does this. But he's missing the second C of our seven C's, mm -hmm. which is the corruption. Mm -hmm. Yes, God made a perfect creation, but then man's sin, sin bringing death mm -hmm. and suffering into this world and corrupted creation. And we see tons of evidence of that corrupted creation, mm -hmm. this being one example, most likely. Right? And so... To recognize as Christians, we can explain both the beauty in this creation that we see around us in our kids, in, in beautiful flowers and in design. We can see creativity. We see beauty. But we can also explain why we see so many horrific things like cancer mm -hmm. and bloodshed and the digger wasp because we live in a broken creation. Mm -hmm. And we see remnants of beauty, but also we see lots of brokenness because of sin. And one day... Christ will return and yes. fix it back to a perfect state. So we've got a hope in Christ. And mm -hmm. So the biblical worldview can handle this, no problem. Darwin didn't have a full biblical understanding. That's why mm -hmm. he was led astray by this particular finding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? yeah. And that's what led a lot of, uh, lead a lot of people astray mm -hmm. uh, because they don't understand that we live in a fallen world. Yeah, um, yeah. That's the part of that they They look don't... at this world and assume God made it this way when yeah. it's a Which, cursed and broken creation right. by mm -hmm. our sin. Right, mm -hmm. that made it. Yeah, so basically their answer to the question of free will was basically, well, humans are just really complex. So we're not, we're not the same as Digger was. Therefore, since we're so complex, we can have free will. Um, Which I made is basically note, their answer. I said, they're getting closer to Genesis chapter mm -hmm. one. All right. We're not mere biological machines. We do mm -hmm. have make decisions and we are responsible. We are unique because we're made in God's image. They're mm -hmm. getting closer. They keep working. They might get there. All right? Yes. So, <laughs> they look to the Bible, they get there a little faster. <laughs> yeah. They're almost becoming right. pastors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this next one also comes from New Scientist. A chimp's hug shows it's time to accept that animals have feelings too. Wow. Want to turn the slide, Brian? Yes, I will. Thank you for one that. One more time. Oh, yeah. I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> so, um, Did I mention I'm tired? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, this is looking at... Um, the idea of do animals have feelings? Because yeah. it used to be biologists could not say animals had feelings. That was something you just know animals do not have feelings. Um, that's what makes us human, they would, would say. But now people are going on to say, particularly talking about this new book, Mama's Last Hug is the name of the book about a chimpanzee. Hey, um, Avery, I clicked the slide. Just good so you job. Know. Thank you. You're on it. You are on it. Um, uh, looking at this book in particular, that 
saying that animals do have emotions and humans need to just own up and realize animals do have emotions. That isn't what makes um, us as humans unique. Um, they say that our mammalian bodies are all essentially the same. Uh, our humans are, our emotions are just more developed as humans. As a, um, and they would argue later on that our different emotions and the way we display those emotions are also just reflections of our evolutionary ancestry from yes. different apes. Mm -hmm. uh, within the evolutionary worldview, all apes today evolved from a common ape-like ancestor over the past, and so it branched off in different ways. We all go back to that common ape ancestor, and we're just reflecting traits of all the different apes today in our particular right. evolutionary branch. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, of course, that's not in line with the biblical worldview at all. Not what at does all. real science hold up to real scrutiny on that particular? issue mm -hmm. right uh, so we'd say I mean it does seem like animals if you have a dog the dog can appear to be happy at times you mm -hmm. know you feel like it responds well when you come home now whether that's a response to hey I'm getting food right, right yeah. get some attention by being petted on or they're actually genuinely on some lower level having an mm -hmm. emotional response we can't be sure it's a complex issue right? because they can't talk to us <laughs> right. they can't tell us how they're feeling we just have to watch and and as humans we're filtering things through the lens of uh -huh. the humans. fact that we're humans sure. and so Absolutely. it's it's a really complex issue it's not as, mm -hmm. as easy as looking at your dog yeah. and saying well the dog looks happy so it must be happy it's it's a complex we, issue and you can look at it either interpreting, way yeah uh, what the anthropomorphizing animal, yeah, things the as well doing, mm -hmm. yeah in either way, whether it's just our interpretation of what we're looking at or whether it's actually some tiny level of emotive response, either way, it's nothing compared to the right. range of human mm -hmm. emotions and also yeah. our ability to articulate our emotions, our ability mm -hmm. to think outside of our emotions, even to recognize at times our emotions are wrong. Right. Yes. Right? Yes. And to think existentially about those sorts of things mm -hmm. because we're made in the image of God. We have this inherent ability to reason, to do logic, to have mm -hmm. emotions, to communicate mm -hmm. what we think and why we believe those certain things. So mm -hmm. we are very different yeah. from the mm -hmm. animals either way you look at it and yeah. also mainly yeah. not be controlled by those emotions. yeah we don't have exactly. to be controlled right. by our emotions right. yes yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. actually we're to be controlled by the word of god who tells yes. us what not, is not we have we the free will to decide <laughs> <laughs> to not be controlled by our emotions <laughs> yeah. let me tie in those articles in <laughs> all right moving on to some geology here science daily new evidence suggests volcanoes caused biggest mass extinction ever wow so this is talking about the extinction called the Great Dying from supposedly 252 million years ago. Uh, and this, they claim, is when 95% of life on Earth went extinct over the course of hundreds of thousands of years. And they're saying potentially it's because of giant volcanic eruptions that were going on sure. over a long period of time that caused the climate to raise uh, by 10 degrees Celsius, that right. polluted water, all those kinds of things, and caused this global catastrophe. And it's... We were commenting, it's really interesting to see how they will believe in any global catastrophe as long as it's not the flood. flood yes. As soon as it's a global flood, no, 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 you can't have that catastrophe. Yeah. Even though we see right. rock layers full of fossils mm -hmm. laid down by water all over the earth, it can't possibly be a global flood. It has to be mm -hmm. a host of other things. So and they're end, they end up having to believe in five different mass extinctions sure. instead of the Bible's history, which yeah, says there was a global was a flood, flood that mm -hmm. formed most of the fossils and rock layers we and have And what's today. really intriguing about this is I go and speak at a lot of churches about the flood and Noah's Ark. One of the, the coolest things from most of the people as they listen, they tell me later on, is to recognize the biblical account of the flood is much different than what they typically think. It wasn't mm. just rain. It wasn't just water. Right. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. You go and look at the actual, what was the mechanism for the flood? It says the fountains of the great deep burst forth and the floodgates of heaven open. The fountains of the great deep most likely refers to subterranean water, water underneath mm -hmm. the crust of the earth. It bursts forth but there's through still some of that the today. crust. Still some mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. As it bursts forth through that crust, that word means to literally break the crust of the uh -huh. earth open and move it catastrophically. So all over the earth, the crust of the earth was cracked and moved catastrophically, which causes which ca huge yeah. right. volcanic, yeah. volcanic Activity. activities and mm -hmm. tsunamis. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, they even describe what these volcanoes were like, most likely. They said many of these eruptions they were not cone-shaped volcanoes, but rather gaping fissures in the ground, mm -hmm. cracking Which the crust. Sounds open, like the fountains of the Great Deep. All over the mm -hmm. earth, just like the Bible describes with the flood. Mm -hmm. Real science confirms the Bible again yep. and again and again. Yeah, it's just interesting to, we have heard a little bit, I think the last two weeks, talking about mass extinction, max extinction, mm -hmm. max extinction. Yeah. Um, and we as the as creation will believe in a max extinction from the flood Absolutely. you know uh, but as avery was saying like they don't want to admit that it's the flood mm -hmm. at all mm -hmm. yeah 
So it, it, they talk here about how one of the volcanoes would have put as much as three million cubic kilometers, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how, whether that is in miles, of ash into the air. Um, and we talk here at the Creation Museum, we have an exhibit that talks about some of these massive volcanoes Absolutely. in the past that put out so much mm -hmm. ash and everything and how that would have affected um, right. things the whole, the whole, the whole world. and brought about the Ice Age and things like uh -huh. that. So when you look at it through the lens of a biblical worldview, it really does make sense. Speaking of that, uh, Roger on here mentions the fact that there are actually over 270 flood legends around the world that sound a whole lot like Genesis, and he is right mm -hmm. about things even yeah. more than that. And then mm -hmm. also, one of our, actually our main illustrator, Dan Letha, has a talk on dealing with some of those uh, legends, and also talking about the bathtub arcs compared to the real arc. And I want to give him a shout out because Dan Letha is watching. <laughs> so if you guys uh, Hi, want to see some really good art, he has a lot of great stuff for the ministry, check out his work. Dan Letha posts a lot on social media. On yeah, yeah, you can go like him so on Facebook and see his shout cartoons out, Dan, and stuff. Do a fantastic job. Check him mm -hmm. out. All right. Do you think we can get through two more? Or should we skip to the, the tree one that I wanted to cover? Uh, I think we can skip to I the think, tree. I think we'll skip to the tree one because today is yep. Earth Day. Mm -hmm. So because it's Earth Day, I wanted to talk about this item before we finish up here. So uh, this one comes from LifeSite News. France proclaims trees should have rights. So this is another great example. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. <laughs> Say that just one more time for clarity. France proclaims trees should have rights. Uh, wow. This is in... So this is another great example of good intentions. We want to protect the environment. We want to be good stewards of what God has created. Which is biblical. Which is biblical, yes. absolutely. Right. Good intentions, really poor execution of those intentions. So right. they, what they, and I really want to read and quote from them directly because, yes, you just have to hear it from them. A tree is a living organism whose average lifespan is far longer than that of a human being. It should be respected throughout its life and have the right to develop and to reproduce freely from its birth to its natural death, whether it be a town tree or a country tree. A tree should be considered as a subject of law, including when laws regarding human property are involved. So this gives, this is a declaration of tree rights, which I believe was signed, um, was adopted um, in the French National Assembly in Paris. Last Friday. And when I was reading through that, and just particularly that phrase, from its birth to its natural death, it should be allowed, it should have respect to its life and should be allowed to develop. Reproduce freely. Abortion is legal in France. And yeah. just this whole, that a tree, I and mean, I'm all for protecting what God has created because we are called to be good stewards. But the fact that they are calling for trees to be protected from, from their beginning to their sure. natural end, and they will not allow children who are created in the image of God to have that same luxury right. is just astounding. Like they, mm -hmm. they want to make this a right well, for trees and they're yeah. not willing to extend that same right to humans who are made in God's image. Like it's just- What's calling it like? darkness is calling yes. good, evil, slipping everything on its head, which is what happens when you abandon the authority of God's mm -hmm. word. It's interesting. It, it, by the way, it's a natural conclusion of the evolutionary worldview. In the evolutionary worldview, all life, plant life and animal life comes from a common ancestor. Therefore, mm -hmm. technically in evolutionary thinking, we are all related. We're related to, to the all plants, these trees. To mm -hmm. the trees, their ancestors. So therefore, they have equal rights to us as a living organism. As a matter of fact, if you keep thinking, man is actually the biggest threat to the trees because we cut them down so industry discriminately in that worldview mm -hmm. to keep, you know, having domain over the earth. And so we're not only equal, but also we're a threat to our enemies, our ancestors, sometimes. to our mm -hmm. cousins, if you will. And <laughs> of course that's not true, but that's where that worldview goes if you follow it through to its logical yep. conclusion, mm -hmm. which is what we say so often. These worldviews have consequences. Consequences, right? yeah. What yep. foundation do Absolutely. you start with? You abandon God's word, this is the kind of stuff you end up with. Because mm -hmm. our rights don't come from, ultimately, from the government. They come from God. Right. And, and as those made in his image, we have certain rights, like the right to life, uh, that God has not given to trees, because trees are not made in his image. So, uh, we, uh, in a biblical worldview, we understand that distinction, but it's lost in an evolution. Yeah, another thing here, it's in these conditions, that's the one of the declar declaration. In these conditions, trees have a right to their physical integrity. That was really tough for me because mm -hmm. kids cannot, babies cannot have the same right. Sure. Yeah. The yeah. physical integrity of a baby, they are mm -hmm. burned. They are just like cut in yeah. pieces, yeah. Yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, when they're aborted. And then here, the trees, mm -hmm. as you said, we are all about taking care of God's Absolutely. creation, yeah. mm -hmm. but you need to be consistent with 
yeah. everything. And let me mm -hmm. just wrap up with saying, really, this is another way to suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Because if we're just equal to the trees, there's nothing special about us. But if the Bible is true, and it is, mm -hmm. then humans are indeed special. We are made in the image of God. We have a mm -hmm. creator. We're accountable to him. He's judged the world in the past. He will judge the world again in mm -hmm. the future. And sinful man doesn't like that idea. And this is another way mm -hmm. to suppress that truth. And dear viewer, if you're watching this and you have not embraced the biblical worldview, you kind of embrace a secular ideology, please recognize it's not true, and you're not just related to a tree. You're so much more than that. You are made in mm -hmm. the image God. of God. Absolutely. That was broken at the fall. We all descend from Adam. We're all sinners by nature, by choice. And there's only one way of being saved through the last Adam, Jesus Christ. Who died on a tree. Who died on a tree. Look at that connection. And there you it go. rose from the grave, defeating death. If we repent mm -hmm. of our sin, turn away, put our faith in him, we can be saved. Amen. Right? And Absolutely. That's what this is all about. And that's why we're mm -hmm. so passionate about giving answers. Yes, yeah. The Ultimately, but the gospel is not true. God's word yes. is true. God's word is right about history. It is right about salvation. Put your faith in Christ. Awesome. Coming. And that is a great way to end this episode. Uh, I noticed a bunch of people put a bunch of puns in the comments. They were fantastic. <laughs> um, so, like, they should have, they have taken leave of their senses because they have no biblical root. Uh, treason wow. to the unborn. Um, do they speak yeah. to the tree about what it wanted? Uh, so, some great ones. That's what uh, so, thank you. So, job. on this, on this, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so on this resist. Earth Day episode, we just want to reaffirm in a biblical worldview, we care for creation because we are we called do. to be good stewards of what God has right. made. But um, we also recognize humans are made in God's image, so we hold a special and unique place in his creation. So thank That's you true. so much for joining us today, uh, and we'll hopefully see you again on Thursday. Have a good day. God bless. Bye-bye.